The ball will also interact with the airflow. If a bowler puts topspin on the ball, it will dip. If he backspins it, it will stay high. Bowlers have one more thing on their side. The pitch can be an ally. Some spinners are expert at getting the ball to hit the pitch on the seam, so it bounces erratically. The ball could go anywhere depending on the surface. Mud, grass, cracks, lumps, all have their own insidious effect on the ball's trajectory. What the pitch is like both at the start and the end of the match can alter how well the bowler plays. The pitch has a, a big say. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at a test match, uh, the pitch invariably doesn't spin in the first two or three days. As it moves into the third and fourth and fifth days, the wicket starts to get crumbly and then the ball can grip the dirt and spin. But when there's excessive grass on there, the, when the ball rotates through the air, as it hits, it won't grip, it'll just skid. So the pitch is very important. But what's a batter to do faced with a bowler like Brett Lee, delivering balls at 100 miles or 156 kilometers an hour? Or a twisting spinner that might deviate any which way when it hits the pitch? He's got milliseconds to decide where the ball is heading and how he's going to play the shot. In part three, we find out how batsmen cope. In this gladiatorial contest, one man is at the receiving end, the batsman. And it's a dangerous place to be. It's beautifully bowled right at the throat. Got straight into it. English bowler Alex Tudor knows the damage a fast ball can cause. When a ball sometimes is, is coming at you, um, be it 80, 90 mile an hour that some of these guys bowl it now, um, it's pretty frightening. The ball is pretty heavy, five and a half ounces um, coming at you at that pace. If you're not wearing the right protection, it can, it can break ribs, break feet, um, send people to hospital. Nowadays, cricketers prepare for battle with as much protection as possible. But in the modern game, modern body armour still can't prevent the smallest but most damaging of injuries. Nearly half of all injuries are to the first finger on the batting hand. How do batsmen play a ball coming at them at an unpredictable speed, about to bounce wildly off a pitch of uncertain hardness? Terry Jenner explains. If I was facing one of mine, I'd, I'd make a lot of runs. But if I was facing a leg spin bowler, Play the ball on its merit. Don't preconceive what you think the ball might be. That's, it's the same when you're playing fast bowling. If you think, boy, I think he's about to bowl me a short one, and you start to head that way and it's well pitched up, you're in big trouble. So you should never preconceive what the ball's going to be. If the ball is going to reverse into you, you want to try and get your arms free. So we try and give ourselves room, step away, um, to the leg side and uh, you know try and get our arms through in a nice arc so we're sort of hitting down the ground sort of to mid on and mid off and wide mid wicket and then generally when you're bowling in swing that's where you most probably will see a lot of batsmen trying to aim. Coaches say to try and keep an eye on the ball but sometimes the ball moves too fast for the human brain to react to it. The batsman only has milliseconds to make a decision about how to play the ball and to hit it accurately he has to judge where the ball will land to within an area the size of a large postage stamp. To find out how batsmen cope, we went into the lab. Here at Liverpool John Moores University, sports scientist Mark Williams is using a visual tracking device to analyse exactly where Richard Pinio, a professional counties cricketer, looks when facing a fast bowler. The computer picks up exactly where Richard is focusing, using an infrared camera mounted on his helmet. The white dot shows where he's looking. What Mark has found is that Richard watches the bowler before the ball is released.
what we found was that batsman is actually very stable in terms of his gaze pattern and tends to fixate primarily on the head and shoulders of the bowler for most of the run-up phase. So this is the kind of midpoint within the run-up and as you can see the, the little white cursor here is fixated primarily on uh, the shoulders and the head region. When watching a fast bowler, he looks at his shoulder region. He can only track the ball for about 200 milliseconds. A very skilled cricketer would then anticipate where he thinks the ball would land. When facing spin, Richard looks at the bowler's hand. The white cursor is located around the area of the ball, so they try and pick up information uh, early on, perhaps from the way that the spin bowler is actually holding the ball. And also it, it seems that as far as this particular batsman is concerned that the left arm and the left shoulder is quite important. This is a right-handed bowler. Stanley, an amateur, doesn't always manage to look at the bowler. Perhaps what's happening here is that the novice batsman is really unsure in terms of where he should be fixating and as a consequence decides to look everywhere to try and extract the, the important information. According to Mark Williams, a good batsman combines experience, expert hand-eye coordination and phenomenal powers of concentration. But even if the batsman knows roughly where the ball is going to be, what's the best batting technique? Just, just what I'd like to see you do a little bit more is you're getting your front foot to the pitch of the ball okay, but you've got to transfer your weight. All right, you understand yeah. what I mean by... Yeah. Ex-player turned ball coach ball Rick Darling goes through the basics of batting. I want to see you transfer your weight by bending your knee, all right, and hit the ball into the ground. Thank you. Good. You must teach them the basic fundamentals of cricket. All right, now that starts with the grip with the hands evenly spaced on the handle as such like that, but more importantly the V's, the V I made there with my thumb and forefinger on both hands, should be pointing more or less down the back of the bat there, okay? So that's, that's the basic grip. From there we'll move on to the basic stance, which is the bat tucks in here behind the back foot, all right? Feet evenly spaced apart with the knee slightly bent. Very important to have the knees slightly bent because that means you're more evenly balanced. Okay, and from that position I can move forward easily or back easily.